Yo, Eric's here, right? We're about to go down and put the new diff on the car and work on a couple things, but it's also Eric's birthday. So we're gonna go surprise him right now. We got him just a just a little bit of stuff. Got us some scratch offs, a little bit of cash. So let's go surprise the guy who's been the biggest supporter, the biggest help, and just an all around perfect homeboy. Parts everywhere, so we're gonna need to set this up on the trunk. Yes, it's ones. No, I'm not buying him a car. got his happy birthday money now we're looking at Valkyrie's birthday money what is this okay so one of the things we wanted to make sure we got putting this thing in is we wanted to get brand new uh, axle seals for those right these little things right here these little black things right there right there those guys right yep. want to get good those that way you got a nice proper seal we're not worried about seepage we're not worried about having to check fluid levels all the time but a few months ago, we were doing the diode dynamic lights on here, and we broke an L bracket right there, right? And when that L bracket broke, had to go into the dealership, get a new one, obviously, $85, right? So we were kind of expecting these uh, seals to be a little pricey. A little bit. Yeah. It's cold, by the way. Golly. Yeah, it's a, it's a little nipply. But McKinney Dodge hooked it up. Got them in the day later. We'll be picking them up tomorrow morning. $17. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. AutoZone and O'Reilly's quoted me $49. Yeah. And it is left and right side different. So you cannot buy a set because they're going to be different. You have to buy them according to the left and right side. So if you're going to do this swap, just keep that in mind. Okay. So there's the one we broke, right? Okay. Now we're going to step out. That's the one that's going in. Do you think there's a slight size difference? Okay, also, while we're right here, I wanted to explain something, okay? I've been talking to a bunch of uh, Hellcat guys and a couple of Demon guys. Shout out to Demonology. And apparently, this whole diff failure thing is very common in Mopars, okay? One of the reasons why is the diff housing likes to move. Now, we showed you on the last video where the inside of it was actually cutting into the wall of the housing. And the reason why is that's connected to the drivetrain. So you gotta look at it the same as kinetic chain in the human body. If one thing's out of whack, everything's gonna go out of whack and eventually something's going to break. It's gonna cause an injury. That's essentially what just happened with the car. So the pinion gear was connected directly to the drive shaft. That was moving also at the independent rear uh, the independent suspension in the rear to move the tires, but the housing's connected directly to the chassis. So one's gonna flex and one's gonna stay still. That's what was happening in this moment, right? It was actually cutting into the wall of this guy, which prematurely caused it to crack, and we have a catastrophic failure. So with this one, our plan is to actually do a full uh, diff brace, which we're going to make ourselves because, as me and Eric discovered, the ones online, a little expensive. A little more expensive than what we should pay for. We don't really give a damn about red powder coating, okay? <laughs> we, we know how to make right angles and we know how to bolt something to the chassis, so I believe we'll save $230? Yeah. Hey, crazy. So there's a little bit of what we think may have actually caused it and how we're going to save this one from having that problem. Okay, so the plan today from what Eric just told me is we're going to go ahead and get the passenger side shaft out. We're going to put the other shafts in. We have to get those seals in tomorrow, right? So we can plug this in. And then tomorrow, not only can we get those seals put in, the half shafts, get everything put back together, but we can also fill this thing and get this big bitch started back up. So yeah. this would be a video covering all of that. 
Also, we have to check a, check a brake line. Uh, we have to check the caliper. Yeah, we, we believe that the, either the caliper needs to be rebuilt or we didn't tighten it down well enough and it's been been leaking just a tad bit. Now, the one thing that I've been noticing with this is where it has been leaking a little bit and hard braking, the side that doesn't have the pressure problem that's not leaking, the car pulls that way. So in this case, it's the passenger side. So I hit the brakes and the car will want to veer a little bit, right? That's another sign that there's not equal braking balance on both sides. So we're gonna fix that. That way, uh, I don't have to worry about dying this race season. Oh shit, that'd be, that suck. Let's get into uh, some warm, how about that? I know that's right. Let's do that. Good diff change, you're going to need gear oil. And of course, this crazy ass diff that I'm putting in requires a special oil, a 7585 GL5, which you're not gonna find at Advanced Auto Parts. You're not gonna find it at AutoZone. You're not gonna find it at Napa. You're not gonna find it at O'Reilly's. Of course you gotta go to the goddamn dealership, right? So two quarts of this shit, right? Two quarts of this, 7585 GL5, right? Mopar, yeah, that means it's real, right? Two quarts, 125 fucking dollars for two quarts of, does this shit have gold in it? It better have fucking gold in it. Get fucking, God damn it. I didn't know I was driving a Mercedes. Okay, so we got that stuff right. What else you're going to need? You're gonna need uh, drive or axle seals. You can get those directly from Mopar. Uh, here, you just look at it. Just look at it. I don't know which number's what. All I know is I ordered them, they're here. So part number might be on there, part might not be on there. That's what we need, that's what we're gonna finish. We're gonna get it on today. You also need an Eric because I've never done this before. Woo, let's get into it. Okay, so this right here is the passenger side axle shaft that was off of the stock configuration. Those are the bigger ones that I bring going in. What are you about to do, bro? I'm just gonna go ahead and take a measurement of the old. About 294. 294, okay. Then we gotta make sure we get it back to zero. And as you can actually- Oh, you can tell there's a difference, yeah. You can yeah. tell there's a huge difference now. Huge difference size right there. Just in, in girth, as the ladies would say. <laughs> girth. <laughs> oh shit, yeah, wow. Way bigger. And that's sitting at 300, or 30. How much? 30. 30. Versus. Uh, 290-ish. So this was a 195 millimeter half shaft. This is a 230. And that's literally the biggest difference you see right there? No, so this, is, this is a three, 300. Now you want to zero it back out because it's going to be a pain in the butt. That's 30. Right at 30, and then you get your right at 292. So they're definitely an upgrade. They're, they're definitely thicker. And that's all I really wanted to check. Just cause we're weird that way. Oh no, 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 no. See, sir, that's called being thorough. 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 Uh, we're being thorough. Make sure you get, you know, what you're supposed to be getting. Companies mess up. We've had to deal with that a couple times at this point. Okay. That one seems a tad shorter there. Let's do this. Uh, now also that's the bigger pieces right there. This is why another reason why we're going to the 230s. If you see the points right here, these are what goes into the differential. See that one? Much bigger, much bigger. Thank God we're doing this too. So make sure you match the axles up to the diff. And that's the exact same length. Okay, so if you do this upgrade, you definitely, 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 definitely have to get a different hack shaft. Yep. The reason I say that is because 
That's a big difference right there too. That's what I was supposed to say. You've got this one sitting at 3562, and this one sitting at 3175-ish. And those are the insertion points into the diff. Yes. So they were definitely going to be different. Thank goodness we've actually um, thought about that. <laughs> we got we we actually got the half shafts that this, these half shafts came off. Uh, the same car that diff the came same off diff. of. Now, so they will pair up directly. Now here we have the same spline count. Yep, looks pretty close to the same spline count. You know, everything seems the same. Um, now, hold on. Now that is one thing. You see the difference right here? When we did the Brembo upgrade on the car, we also put in uh, scat pack half shafts in the rear. So this has all been a process that started months ago for this upgrade. Very much so. Okay. Oh yeah, that's much shorter. Oh wow. And there it is. So a lot of people were telling me that you can buy, you know, the same size and it'll be fine, right? It's substantially shorter. Yeah. So this is the this this first one here, this is the passenger side. Passenger side. And then this is the driver's side. Now right here do we need to bend that back out yeah i'm gonna bend that back out okay and then same here so for what they did what they did is they had a hard time getting that off so they they bent that to pry it off because that's the stock one right yeah this is the stock one okay and this is the passenger side and this is the driver's side so we're so these came off of a donor vehicle so for all of you who are like oh i bought the level five drive shaft they were eighteen hundred dollars these were two hundred bucks two hundred dollars it's gonna do the same thing now if i now when we get to the point of 900 horsepower mm. we'll have to go a little bit bigger but in the meantime these are gonna do what we need them to do and they come off of a scat pack yep. anyway so i mean everything's gonna be fine yep so horsepower wise should work all right for now we're not we're not super crazy yet we will be but well, we'll be see how many times these uh handle a four thousand rpm launch <laughs> yeah. now for insertion so that end's going to go through the hub or no that's the diff point excuse yeah. me this one's going through the hub so it can be screwed back in right here this is the passenger side so we're going to get that in yes Woo. there's not going to be a camera point down there because it's literally as simple as inserting and locking in before we put the diff in hard life Thanks, Pittsburgh. Anytime you get a bolt, I mean, you can still kind of see a little bit of that green stuff that's on it. Yeah. You want to do what they call a thread chase, which means you're just cleaning the bolt up. This is what they call a die, and you just you just screw it through there, and it cleans. It actually cleans up the uh, bolt. Lock tight. Yeah. It cleans the lock tight off the bolt, and then that way you have a clean bolt, and you don't have to worry about. Say for instance, you know, when you tried to get, you tried to, ooh, you tried to thread it in there and you got the first couple of threads maybe marred up. You can straighten it back Your die will cut that thread back out to where you don't have to worry about that. Same thing with the tap. You know, if you go to screw something in and you know, they're supposed to be like this. If you screw it in like this, that's not gonna work. Yep. But at least you can take your tap and die set you can clean your with your die you can clean the first part of your bolt back up and then with your tap you can actually clean out the bolt hole or nut whichever one it actually is and then that way you don't have to worry about oh crap well i gotta go buy this other part because this is messed up yep it's a lot easier so the bolts that he's cleaning up right now go through the drive shaft which and connects directly yoke. into the yoke that is on the diff <sighs> Big old monster. And we're about to thread the, we're about to chase the threads on the diff or the yoke right now. Just to make sure they're cleaned up as well. 10, 1, 5. Started on the ground, I'm working in the basement. Uh, made it to the attic, swear it's so amazing. Yeah, I can't even lie, I feel like I just made it. 
Uh, tell them check the numbers, man, you can't debate it Don't talk about sage, I just started last May Now I'm out getting paid, tell them I need a raise Get chips, no lays, all the God be the praise Dude, that is a monster piece Holy shit That's what he said? Wait, 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 let me go ahead and zoom in on his face yeah. What did you say? That's what he said. That's a problem. Why, why that, is it a problem? That, that is a problem. No, we are zoomed in on it's your- It's a monster piece. We Meaning big, big piece of what? Big piece of what? Wiggle around, wiggle around. Wiggle around. Wiggle around. Wiggle around. Wiggle around. This is why we do shit at the shop. It's a forklift. <laughs> Stop commenting on my videos. What I'm doing now is I'm trying to get, you've already twitched out. I did not take it out. Instead of taking that all apart and then just, a whole two girls have heard that. I mean, uh, wow. Okay, Jacob, here. I ain't never forced nothing to say Star Wars. All right, diff is in. Diff Suspen is in. Suspension's being rebuilt. Again. Putting this, putting this stuff together. Now when you, um, if you've ever taken this stuff off, when you, I'm gonna call this a lower control arm. It's just, I'm probably wrong, but anyway. So the lower control arm, when it goes to your, we'll call it a knuckle. So, let's show you on this. Well, I say that. So, when you go to put that on there, the this goes into here. It's a really tight fit. You have one side that's a solid piece, but then you have this bushing on this side. This bushing is there to create that, um, so it'll actually fit up against that um, rubber grommet a lot better, or that rubber bushing. And you can see here that it's sleeved. So when you bolt that down, it'll push in there. So the best thing to do when you go to take put this back on is actually hammer that to where it's flush with your aluminum part here that way it'll go in easy and you don't have such a hard time trying to shove that back in there because that's going to be a super tight fit yeah and it that is. will help <laughs> <laughs> you can't say anything on that one <laughs> so that that'll help you that'll help you out a lot trust me and then um then it's just you know you just Putting it back all in like it was to begin with. We only had to take one side apart. So there's a good chance that we might, even ha might not even have to worry about the alignment. Thank goodness. Because we have a lot more that's about to go into the bottom, or the, the drivetrain of this thing, so. Yes. We gotta limit as much as we can right now. <laughs> no joke. Although, Eric already knows that I'm about to get out here on the street with this new diff and. Tear it up! <laughs> We've already decided if, if we're gonna blow the stock transmission, fuck it, let's make it count. <laughs> That's the truth. Ugh, we're just waiting on that Paramount to get in. Oh, I can't wait. And, 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 ding. We may have found a uh, solution to our drive uh, shaft issues. So, we will keep you up to date on that. So Eric, what do we got left? We got putting that back together, getting the wheels on, then filling the diff. Filling the diff. Yep. With uh, the unicorn juice over here, 61 goddamn dollars a quart. Yes. Oh, oh, God, that made me mad. Yeah, and then we're gonna check a break up front and then put her back on the ground. Put her on the ground and first in. Woo! Hell yeah, brother. So we were almost done, right? And then we discovered that we tore one of the outside CV joint boots. So now we gotta go to a Dodge dealership right now and find it as fast as we can. It's always an adventure. Okay, so the mad dash to get to Mopar parts before it closed was a fucking failure. If you rip a CB boot, don't go to the dealership because they're going to tell you they have to sell you the entire axle for a piece that's removable and replaceable. So, off to find a universal kit. Something like that, hopefully. Shiza. So, O'Reilly's didn't have exactly what we needed, so fuck it. Got a universal kit. You can't really see. Blue light. Hey, there we go. And we're gonna go make this work, one way or another. Figure something out. Yep, because we're not buying another axle. Fuck that noise. 
So for that tiny little tear and the tiny little boot on the outside portion of the CV axle, we had to go buy this stuff. So that's a clamp kit, universal kit. So in this universal kit comes with a little bit of grease, this weird condom looking thing, and some more clamps. So now we're gonna have to take that apart, put that back together, Don't look at me. Don't pull everything look apart. Don't look at me. Take everything, put it back together again. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Fail. Fucking fail. You're the one that broke it, douche. Oh. Okay, so we're gonna end this video with uh, some canes and let Eric explain to you why we're ending this video with some canes and what happened. Eric, explain to the people. <laughs> I fucked up. <laughs> so we uh, we got into the little boot and um. This little bitty spot right, where'd it go? Hell, you can't even tell now. Right here. Right there. A tiny little, little tear. Oh, well, it's not too tiny, but grease was coming out, so um, they don't sell these. Nope. Um, and to snap this apart is uh, quite the pain in the ass. At least it seems like it that way. I'll find out later because I will take this one apart. But I'm going to buy a new one because... I don't want to put this on the car with this, with some weird get up that they want to sell you. They want to sell you just a, um, what is it? What were they calling it? The, hmm, that CVC, the CVC boot that we bought. A oh, universal. A universal kit? A universal yeah. kit. But, nah, we're not going to do that. We don't need anything, we don't need anything to fuck up on it. Um. Especially since we're actually finally going to be able to get the the 390 LSD going. So, we'll just go buy another one. Shit happens. It's all part of building a race car. It's called, if you see Eric on Harry Hines, just tip me well after we're done. Okay? He's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys. Unfortunately, that's all part of building a race car. So, today, we're going to finish out with some canes. Y'all stay savage. Stay in the life of me